The iTotal Posterior Stabilized Total Knee Replacement System is a patient-specific tricompartmental knee replacement system composed of personalized implants and disposable instrumentation. The product design incorporates a bone-preserving approach for the treatment of severe pain and or disability of a knee damaged by osteoarthritis or trauma. By utilizing proprietary iFit image-to-implant technology and data from a patient's CT scan, implants are personalized for each patient. This personalized approach enables a fit so precise that it virtually eliminates the sizing compromises common with traditional total knee replacements. The implant is designed to restore the natural articulating geometry of the knee. The accompanying patient-specific disposable eye jig instrumentation is employed in the following five steps. Distal femoral resection, tibial resection, femoral preparation, tibial preparation, final trialing and cementing implants. Every iTotal PS system ships with a set of iView patient-specific planning images. The iView images provide patient-specific information on bone resection and distal femoral implant offset values, as well as positioning information for the implants and eye jigs. Step 1. Distal femoral resection. Position the patient on an operating table with the leg resting on a foot support at approximately 90 degrees of flexion. After a straight midline skin incision, prepare a medial peripatellar arthrotomy. Place the positioning eye jig F1 on the femur so it finds its natural conforming location. This eye jig is designed to reference osteophytes and will secure firmly onto the femur. The anterior stylus will reference the anterior cortex. The femoral eye jigs have been designed to fit over 3 mm of cartilage. There may be some space between the eye jig and femur where there has been cartilage loss. Using the coring tool, core through the two distal holes of the F1 eye jig down to subchondral bone. Remove the F1 eye jig. Using a curette or rongeur, remove any residual cartilage within the cord holes. Attach the alignment eye jig F2 to the captured distal resection eye jig F3C. Ensure the distal resection key eye jig F3A is properly positioned within the F3C eye jig to the zero position. Place the eye jig assembly onto the femur. The two round protrusions on the under surface of F2 should seat into the cartilage voids created by the coring tool. Drill through the anterior parallel pinholes of F3C and insert two Steinman pins. Then drill and place a Steinman pin into at least one or more of the cross pinholes of F3C using the 3 mm drill bit. Next, drill through the two distal holes of F2. These holes will be used later as reference for the rotation of the AP resection eye jig F4. Remove the F2 eye jig by squeezing the release tabs on F2. If an additional 2 mm of bone needs to be resected from the distal femur, slide the key so that plus 2 is visible in the viewing window before making the distal resection. If a more conservative distal femoral cut is desired, Slide the key so that the minus 2 is visible in the viewing window before making the distal resection. The F3C eye jig has a patient-specific surface that extends over the trochlea and may or may not have a step cut depending on which option preserves the most bone. If a step cut is present, use a reciprocating saw blade along the step to complete the cut. Next, use the oscillating saw blade to complete the distal medial and lateral resections. Make sure that the saw blade is at a slight angle when inserting it into the captured slot. The saw blade must touch bone prior to the initiation of the saw blade. Remove the F3C eye jig. Place the extension spacer block, T2, onto the cut distal femur to confirm the cuts are planar. If T2 does not sit flat, revisit the cuts as needed. Step 2. Tibial Resection the tibial resection eye jig, T1, is designed to resect below the lowest point on the medial tibial plateau. The T1 eye jig has two projections that match the subchondral bone surface of the proximal tibial plateau and one projection on the distal portion of the T1 eye jig that matches the subchondral bone surface on the anterior tibia. With the leg in flexion, place the T1 eye jig onto the tibia and mark the boundaries of three projections with a surgical marker. Remove the T1 eye jig. 
Using a scalpel or a curette, remove any cartilage or tissue left within the marked lines. Next, place T1 back into position on the tibia and verify alignment by attaching an alignment rod. The alignment rod should point distally to the center of the malleoli and should be in line with the tibial mechanical axis in the coronal plane as well as parallel with the tibial mechanical axis in the sagittal plane. Once T1 is in proper alignment, drill and pin T1 into place through the two parallel holes and at least one of the two cross pin holes. Complete the tibial resection. There are plus two and minus two options on the tibial recut eye jigs. If an additional two millimeters of bone needs to be resected, use the plus two pinhole position. If a more conservative tibial resection is desired, use the minus two pinhole position. Step three, femoral preparation. Remove all peripheral tibial and femoral osteophytes. With the knee in extension, place the extension spacer eye jig T2 between the cut distal femur and the cut proximal tibia. Assess the knee for appropriate balance by applying varus and valgus stress. The joint space should be open approximately one to two millimeters medially and laterally. Attach an alignment rod to the anterior hole on the T2 eye jig pointing proximally towards the femoral head and an alignment rod to the posterior hole pointing distally towards the center of the malleoli and assess the coronal alignment of the knee. Confirm full extension. Bring the knee into 90 degrees of flexion and then place the flexion spacer eye jig T3 onto the cut proximal tibia. The femoral condyles should sit posteriorly on T3. Assess the knee for appropriate balance by applying a varus and valgus stress. Two, three, four, and five millimeter shims are provided in case of posterior condylar cartilage loss. If the knee is appropriately balanced and aligned, proceed to final femoral preparation. If required, additional distal femur can be resected, additional proximal tibia can be resected. The degree of flexion laxity can be modified by adjusting the position of the AP resection IJIG F4 or ligament releases can be performed. Place two Steinman pins into the previously marked holes on the distal femur. Slide the AP resection IJIG F4 over the Steinman pins to sit flush against the surface of the cut distal femur. The medial side of the F4 IJIG will match the medial profile of the cut distal femur excluding the profile of the medial offset cross pin hole. Confirm that the profile of F4 does not overhang the cut distal femur medially or laterally and is centered on the cut surface. The AP eye jig stylus F4A can be attached to F4 in order to verify proper placement of the eye jig. Use the angel wing to confirm the anterior resection will not notch the femur. Up to 5 degrees of external rotation may be added by rotating F4 around the medial pin. Once proper placement and rotation have been achieved, drill and pin the F4 eye jig into place through any of the posterior cross pin holes and insert Steinman pins. Anterior cross pin holes and a medial offset cross pin hole are provided to allow for additional stabilization of the F4 eye jig. Remove the initial two Steinman pins that were used for rotational placement. Proceed with the posterior and anterior femoral resections, followed by the anterior chamfer femoral resection using the F4 eye jig. If either of the anterior cross pin holes were used to stabilize the F4 eye jig, remove them before completing the anterior chamfer resection. Next, drill the two implant lug holes using the 8 mm femoral drill bit. Remove the cross pins and the F4 eye jig. With the knee in 90 degrees of flexion, insert the post-resection flexion spacer eye jig T3F on the cut tibial plateau. The femoral condyles should sit posteriorly on the T3F eye jig. Reconfirm assessment of appropriate balance by applying a varus and valgus stress. The shims can be used on the surface of the T3F eye jig to assess laxity of the flexion gap. If the knee is appropriately balanced and aligned, proceed to the remaining steps of final femoral preparation. If the knee is tight or loose in flexion, resect additional distal femur or proximal tibia or perform ligament releases. Place the chamfer eye jig F5 onto the distal femur so the pegs fit into the previously drilled lug holes. Impact F5 by hand or if needed by lightly tapping with a mallet on the impaction surface. Do not impact the cutting surface. Complete the open bottom chamfer resection first, followed by the captured top chamfer resection. 
The F5 iJig can be stabilized using the handles on the medial and lateral edges, or the iJig can be pinned into place on the anterior surface using Steinman pins. If additional resection of the distal femur is required, anterior pinholes on F5 that align into the nominal position of the pins set by the distal resection iJig at the original position. Place the box cutting iJig F6 onto the femur and fully seat it by gently impacting the two small distal surfaces using a mallet. If necessary, revisit the previously completed resections to improve fit. When in final position, the F6 iJig should sit flush in the prepared lug holes and around the femoral bone surfaces. Drill and pin F6 through the cross pin holes. Insert the drill card iJig F6A into the F6 iJig. Drill and insert Steinman pins into the pinholes within the F6A iJig. Remove the F6A iJig and the Steinman pins. Create the box resection by cutting vertically downward with the edge of the saw blade set flush against the iJig surface around the three sides of the F6 iJig. Remove the Steinman pins. Use the F6B, the box gauge, to check the accuracy of the box resection. Place it in the box of the F6 iJig. If the box gauge does not seat flush with the F6 iJig, remove the F6B iJig and check for any leftover bone or soft tissue that may be preventing the gauge from sitting flush within the F6 iJig. Do not impact the F6B iJig into the F6 iJig. Assemble the impactor head onto the impactor handle by connecting the two pieces at the mating surfaces. Then connect the femoral impactor iJig onto the assembly. Place the femoral trial onto the femur and impact it into place. Remove any remaining osteophytes, including those on the posterior femoral condyles and on the posterior intercondylar notch. Also, remove any bone in the transition area between the femoral trial and the posterior condyles. Step 4. Tibial Preparation Confirm peripheral tibial osteophytes have been removed and place the tibial preparation iJig T4 onto the cut proximal tibial surface. Multiple thicknesses of the T4 iJig are provided that are equivalent to the thickness of the tibial tray plus the thickness of the tibial poly inserts. The T4 iJig has the same profile as the tibial tray and should be positioned for optimal plateau coverage while keeping to the posterolateral lateral corner of the proximal tibia. There's approximately 1 mm of clearance around the T4 iJig to allow for intraoperative flexibility in rotational positioning. Confirm alignment by attaching the alignment rod adapter A1 to the handle of T4 and snap an alignment rod onto A1. In the coronal view, verify that the alignment rod is parallel to the mechanical axis. In the sagittal view, the alignment rod will be perpendicular to the tibial slope. Bring the joint through a range of motion and assess balance and ligament tensioning using the selected T4 iJig. If a thicker tibial assembly is desired, repeat with a larger T4 iJig. If the knee is properly balanced, pin the tibial preparation iJig into place using the tack pins. Place the tibial preparation drill tower T4A into the selected T4 iJig. Be sure the drill tower sits flush to the proper depth and drill angle. Drill the stem hole through T4 down to the physical stop. The size of the stem drill bit and keel punch is indicated on the handle of the T4 iJig and on the eye view. Remove the drill tower and attach the corresponding size keel punch onto the impactor handle and turn clockwise to lock it into place. Impact through the keel slot in T4 using the keel slot as a physical stop. Step 5. Final trialing and cementing implants. Prior to cementing, an additional trialing step can be performed using the femoral trial in conjunction with the trial inserts and the tibial tray trial. Install the tibial tray trial by manually inserting it and then gently impacting it into place using the tibial tray impactor tip. Using the femoral impactor tip, impact the femoral trial on the femur. Insert the selected trial insert by sliding the trial insert spine underneath the box and up and against the cam mechanism of the femoral trial. Push the trial insert into the tibial tray trial. Rotate the foot to expose the joint space to facilitate insertion. Additional trial inserts are provided with the system. 
The numerical value of the insert represents the thickness of the medial side of the insert. The lateral side of the poly measures the numerical value of the medial side in millimeters plus the distal femoral implant offset. Successive trial inserts increase in thickness while maintaining the distal femoral offset, which is provided on the iView patient-specific planning images. Bring the joint through the range of motion to evaluate kinematics and ligament balance. Use different trial insert thicknesses to achieve desired balance and alignment. In the event soft tissue balance or joint alignment cannot be achieved, ligament balancing using standard soft tissue releases may be considered. Once optimal balancing and tensioning have been achieved, proceed to cement the implants. Thoroughly wash and dry the bone prior to cementing. Apply a layer of cement to the cut tibia and the tibial tray with less cement posteriorly. Impact the tibial tray. Remove any residually extruded cement from around the tibial tray with consideration for any cement that may have extruded posteriorly. Apply a layer of cement to the femoral bone while taking care not to apply cement on the posterior condyles. Then add a layer of cement to the femoral implant, applying less cement posteriorly to prevent posterior cement extrusion. Impact the femoral implant. Remove any residually extruded cement from around the implant. Select the appropriate trial insert and insert it into the tibial tray. Bring the joint through the range of motion to evaluate kinematics and ligament balance. Use different trial insert thicknesses to achieve desired balance and alignment. In the event soft tissue balance or joint alignment cannot be achieved, ligament balancing using standard soft tissue releases may be considered. Remove the trial insert. Align the selected poly insert by verifying the profile of the poly insert is directly on top of the profile of the tibial tray. Do not impact the poly insert if the profile of the insert is overhanging the profile of the tibial tray. Aligning the cutout on the poly insert with the cutout on the tibial tray during insertion will help ensure proper positioning. Impacting a poly insert that is improperly placed on the tibial tray may damage the locking mechanism of the poly insert. Insert the poly insert by sliding the poly insert spine underneath the box and up and against the cam mechanism of the femoral implant. Push the poly insert into the back of the tibial tray. Rotate the foot to expose the joint to facilitate insertion. Assemble the tibial poly impactor tip onto the impactor handle. Tap the poly insert back and into place with a posterior projection impaction. Once properly in place, the poly insert will be at a 3 to 5 degree angle to the tibial tray, with no more than a 2 to 3 millimeter gap anteriorly. Ensure the poly insert is fully seated posteriorly within the tibial tray before tapping down. And impact the head of the impactor handle with a mallet. Visually confirm that the poly insert is locked into place within the tibial tray. There should be no gapping between the poly insert and the tibial tray. After implantation of the iTotal PS knee replacement system is complete, closure is performed according to standard protocol. Thank you for reviewing the iTotal PS surgical technique animation video. For further technical information or surgical training material, please contact a conformist representative.